This is Concrete Faith Assembly with Pastor Gospower Edo, a man of God loaded with messages that are targeted at rishi minds and with the mandate of liberating people from all forms of frustrations and oppression. In search of favorable prospects. In search of favorable prospects. Prospect is acquiring the good things that you desire to have. Prospect is attaining something that you desire to have that you have not had. That is to say, something good, something nice, something rich. And sometimes we go about searching and seeking for these good things. And when we say we are in search of favorable prospects, we are saying that we are going looking for what can be good for us, where we can settle down, the things that, that make us to be comfortable. That is what we are talking about. I told somebody in Genesis chapter 12, Abraham. So come out of thy father's house and go and meet me where I'm going to show you. In Genesis chapter 12, I want you to look at it. From verse 5 to 7. When God has called him, he called him. He said, gather yourself and search out. Come out. Then in verse 5, he said, And Abraham took Sarah his wife, and what his brother saw, and all their substance that they had gathered, and the souls that they had gotten in Haran. And they went forth to go into the land of Canaan. And into the land of Canaan they came. And Abraham passed through the land unto the place of Sychar, unto the plain of Moreh. And the Canaanites were dead in the land. And the Lord appeared unto Abraham and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And there Builded he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. You see, Abraham was asked to come out of his father's house to go and search out the land. Whenever God calls you out, God wants to meet with you, or what God wants to promote you, He will give you the privilege, the opportunity to make a search. That search is a way of proving you, trying your faith. See whether you are going to respond. And so God told Abraham, He said, Come out of the brother's house. He took the man and I will show you. He has not shown him the land, but he was to go and search for the land. He was to go and discover the land. He was to go and see whether the land is real or not real. We are searching every day. And some people have searched and seen. And some people have still searched. If you are here, if you have seen the land, but you have not been fruitful, the land has not been fruitful enough, I will tell you what to do today. Praise the Lord. And if you are here, you are still searching, you have not gotten to the land that you needed to go, I will tell you what to do to search and get to the land. But I want you to understand that this searching is in various dimensions. We use land as a point of contact, but it could be a spiritual land. It is possible that you desire to attain certain spiritual heights. You want to attain certain spiritual feet. You want to acquire certain amount of money. You want to acquire certain things in life. Land, vehicles, whatever you think about. Marriage, it could be your land. And it's the prospect you are talking about. And you are in search of such a favorable prospect. There's somebody searching to get married. He's searching for a favorable prospect. Somebody is searching to acquire financial breakthrough. He's searching for a favorable prospect. Some of you is acquiring or searching to be, have breakthrough in ministry. You want to attain certain spiritual feats. It's the search of favorable uh, prospects. So I want you to be very careful as we're going to talk about the search of favorable prospects. So that you will not see that the level of financial breakthrough alone or level of spiritual breakthrough alone or level of marital breakthrough. But the lots of things that surround prospects and what is going to teach out Really prospect to you in Jesus' name. Well, something happened. Before Abraham left the father's house, before God told him to leave his father's house, he had already misfired, all his father has already misfired before. 
his father called Terah had already lifted up and gathered the children. I want you to look at that uh, Genesis chapter 11. I want to read from verse 26 to that one. Genesis chapter 11. We read chapter 12 before, but I want to bring it back to chapter 11, verse 26. And Terah lived 70 years and begat Abraham. Now, and Terah, that is three sons. Now, these are the generations of Terah. Terah begat Abraham, Nahor, and Heron. And Heron begat Lot. This Heron begot Lot. Lot was the son of Abraham's brother. Then verse 28. And Heron died before his father Terah in the land of his nativity, in all of the Cadiz. And Abraham and Nahor took their wives. The name of Abraham's wife was Sarai. And the name of Nabal's wife, Mecca, the daughter of Hera, the father of Mecca, and the father of Isaac. But Sarah was barren. She had no child. Verse 31 is our point of focus. And Terah took Abraham his son, and Lord the son of Hera, his son's son, and Sarah his daughter in law. His, his, his son of Abraham's wife, and they went forth with them from all into Cadiz to go into the land of Canaan, and they came unto Hera and dwelt there. You know, I want to look up. There are three things I'm going to talk about here in respect of the need or what is needed while searching for a favorable prospect. I want to talk about three things. Number one. You must keep searching until you find your ground. You must keep searching until you find your ground. If you look at that place we read in verse 31 of Genesis chapter 11, the father of Abraham settled in Haran. He didn't continue to search until he gets to the place that was required that was fertile. Some people today have settled in an unfertile ground. And that is the reason why they continue to be in trouble. Terah and the two sons, Abraham and Hanor, with the son's son, which is Lot, when they got to Terah, they settled in a rock place. And because they settled in a rock place, they saw Haran died. When we talk about Haran, Haran, it's just like this community was named after somebody. You understand that? The name of this community named after somebody. So when you say they settled in Haran and the son Haran died, so the son was named after the name of the community. You understand what I'm saying, man? So they settled in a place. If you settle in the wrong place, you will not get results. So, in our search for a favorable prospect, implies that one of the things that is needed while searching for a favorable prospect is that you should keep on searching until you get to your required land. It is to keep searching. So many people are so much in haste. They settle down so quickly, so easily. Whatever you are pursuing, you are pursuing certain spiritual gifts. Just because of one sign you saw of the gift, you stop praying and searching more about the details of that gift of the Spirit. I told you when I talked about searching for one program. It's multi-dimensional, I told you. You understand now? Maybe you are searching for a financial breakthrough and you have a little business, you get a breakthrough, you get some little money, some naira coming, some coming. You refuse to pray more to tell God what is the secret of making more and much more money in this business. Oh, you were thinking of getting married and your first suitor come. He, he came and he just said, ah, okay, uh, yes, this is the layout. This must be the choice of the Lord. Like, Samuel was going to talk about the first song of Jesse. You must keep searching until you get to a favorable ground. And if you are here and then hearing the sound of my voice, and you thought that where you have settled was the best land for you, 
God says I should tell you today that you should keep searching. And by the advantage of the session today, you are getting to a higher ground in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen to me very well. Whatever little you have received, God used that one to tell you that He's going to give you more. And therefore, whatever God has promised and that is still coming can only be attained when you keep on searching. Our search is prayer. Our search is being inquisitive. Our search is multiplying our faith. Our search is lifting up the word of God. That is our search. And please listen there. Well. I see somebody going to higher ground. Yeah. I see somebody going to higher ground. Yeah. It was so painful. Somebody who got to you know, you know listen very well. Before God told Abraham to go to Canaan, he already told his father who is called Tema, Terra to go to where? Canaan. The man was not told by God, but by intuition, by body movement. He was told the family, let's go to Canaan. Instead of going to keep searching until he gets to Canaan, he settled in hell. There he lost his son. There trouble came. Tell somebody, I'm not settling for the little things. I am not settling for the little things. Somebody here, you have something, and God is saying, I should tell you that He wants you to develop your faith today. But as you need to pray, God is going to lift you higher and higher. You are going to get the fullness of that miracle in Jesus' name. Yeah. That is how we search for favorable prospects. You must keep searching. But look at how the Apostle First John chapter 4. I want to read from verse 1 to 3. Beloved. Believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Look up first, look up first. Believe not every spirit. You know, sometimes when we read the Bible, we begin to think about only one segment of the Bible and the scriptures. Believe not every spirit. If you are in search of proper harvests, you are in search of great, great things. You are in search of where to settle down. Let me use a physical location for an illustration. Maybe you've been looking for a place to settle down in business. You come to a city like this. He said, believe not every spirit. Every territory, every city, every village, every hamlet is controlled by spirit. You understand? Believe not every spirit. Why? He said, test all the spirit. As you are going from the city to city, as you are going from church to church, as you are going from man of God to test every spirit. If you come to a place and you discover that, no, what I'm seeing here in this community, if I organize this business there, the spirit here is not in agreement with my spirit. You know, there's a community, a village, a place you can go to. You will have the place being in agreement with your spirit. Am I right? When you get to a place and you discover that, the place is not in agreement with your spirit. That's to say, test every spirit. It's not only the spirit of the man of God, woman of God that we are asked to test. The spirit in the environment, the spirit of the environment, the spirit in the place. Test every spirit. You know, there are some places you can just go. Say, my body not do me where well to remain in this place. This person when I be following the talk show. My body not do me where well to be my friend. And you understand what I'm saying now? It is not just about manifestation of the gift of the spirit of the spirit of God. He said, my beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, whether that is the place God wanted to dwell, because false prophets are gone out into the world. You get to a place and say, yes, I'm comfortable here. As I was in the dream, I saw this, I saw that. I perceive in my spirit that the word of God, the word of God told me, listen very well, that any spirit that does not agree with your spirit is not the spirit of God, or not the spirit that is meant for you. That's what if you look at that scripture, look at it that way. He said, Beloved, believe not every spirit, or try the spirit one and the hand of God, because many false prophets are gone out to the world. Here by their stood, know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is all God. It's telling that in this situation that I greet with your spirit, you know the Bible says that the spirit 
will always agree with the spirit of the child of God. In this situation, that the God go that way with you because everybody is a prophet. Too. Everybody you are seeing is a potential prophet or prophetess, whether you like it or not. There are times you meet with some people, your spirit will not agree with them, three of us. That is what is telling you. But anyone that your spirit agrees with, anybody, as you meet immediately, the first impression matters most when you meet with somebody. When you meet with somebody the first time, all other impression might be false. But the very first impression, ah, this person enter my body, or oh, the person not enter my body. That first impression, no matter other impression that will come up later, the first impression matters. And that's what the Bible is saying here. He said in verse 2, look at it very well. He said, Hereby ye know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that is, that is an agreement, that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, is of God. That is any spirit, any spirit that agrees with you on the first instance is the Spirit of God. I tell you honestly, every situation that you have passed through, and not negative, and all because you were in error, today is getting rectified in Jesus' name. Amen. Because the purpose of this is that anybody that has made a, red, a, a wrong uh, search, and have got a wrong search of business, of spiritual life and gifts, will get them to rectify today in Jesus' name. Amen. So, we need to, number one, to keep searching until we find good ground for us. Then, number two, we must be vigilant to identify good ground. You know, sometimes, one of the most difficult things is to identify which is a good ground. When I'm talking in terms of business, in terms of partner, in terms of environment where to do worship, in terms of spiritual gifts, to know the good ground takes the power of being diligent, being vigilant, being proactive. What do I mean? In First Peter chapter five verse eight, the Bible says, "It should be sober and be vigilant." Then the Bible says, "Be sober, be vigilant, because you are watching the devil as a running lion." Walk it about seeking who he may you, you know why you are seeking or searching for favorable uh, prospects? Satan will be there to distract you, to present his own prospect to you. Some of the prospects are faulty. Some of the prospects are not the prospects of God. Some of them are adulterated. Some of the pro prospects are Satan created, motivated prospects. And if you fall into them, you will not last long. There are some of these young men, women, boys and girls over there going into the prospect of devil. And they have a number of years, few years to live. But they are driving luxurious cars. Am I right? But not living long. That is on favorable prospect. So we are saying like that. You must be vigilant to identify a good ground, a good prospect. Because it is only by getting into a good prospect that you can last long, that you can endure the test of it, and that you can see that the prospect is a good one. Praise the Lord. So I want to understand you. How do you become vigilant and define those prospects? You must be prayerful. You have to pray continually. Tell the Lord, say Lord, I want something good for me. You know, remember what the Lord told us in Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 to 9. He said, no father will give a child a serpent when he asks him to give him fish. That is to say, whatever you desire, asking and believing, God will give it to you. And so one of the ways of searching to identify, you say, God, I will you by your word. You know, let me tell you something. And the time you will God by his word, and the time you will God by his word, your miracle will be his tacticals. Are you hearing it now? Do you know what I'm saying? If Bible say, I have been young and I am old, I have not seen the righteous for shame. And you know by the grace of God, you have the righteousness of God in you. Only that scripture you quoted that you reminded God stands for you. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Sometimes when you are in difficulties, 
What a difficulty. Try to prove God with the scripture. That's what the Hezekiah did to God when Isaiah the prophet came and said, Put your hands in the for that I shall not die. Thou said the Lord. He said, God, it is written. He quoted scripture. He said, I have been living well in all my days. I have been to cancel this. You, you remember somebody gave testimony on Sunday. And I commented on that testimony. Because a lot of you were going to misinterpret the testimony. Somebody gave a testimony on Sunday here. The woman said she came to me and she said she had been selling cookies to sell and for some time it doesn't sell. It cook about. It used to cook up to one, two baskets of rice and beans and it was not selling again. You know, now you can even go half bar because it doesn't sell. I don't know what is happening. Now, when she came, he said, I prayed over prayer with her, and I knew we were going to misinterpret the issue. That was what I explained. And she said that I told her that I want to pray for you that if what you are selling is good, what you are hawking is good, you will prosper. But if you are what you are selling, hawking is bad, is evil, you will not sell. So that was the prayer I prayed for her. Now, once he got home from then, explosion, explosion, and you remember the testimony of Sunday. And the reason I explained that is that you know, I think that I was accusing her of selling evil things. No, I was trying to tell you that you said that the righteous cannot be forsaken. You understand what I mean? Sometimes I told you when I pray some prayer, I say, God, if I'm a man of God, not that the Bible is saying that. Elijah is that if he's the man of God. Are you hearing me now? It's not that the book of if I'm really born again. It's not that they are not telling the book You want to prove a point, a scriptural point, that God has said, I'm not giving you expo if you are here. And your prayer point has been stagnant, nothing is happening. I said, Today, you are going to prove God. And God will answer you in Jesus' name. Amen. I said, God will answer you in Jesus' name. Amen. So, what we are saying is that we must be vigilant. And be sober and make sure that we identify the good ground. How to identify good ground? You have to pray. Prove God. Prove God with the word of God. Prove it. Tell him, God, this is your word. And you will get answer in Jesus' name. Number three thing that we need to do while searching for favorable prospects is we have to put all effort in tilling the ground for result. You know, some people, they pray casually. Some people, they attack an issue at the very surface level. When you discover your ground, hear me and hear me well. When you discover your ground, maybe you have been praying for something, you have a little sign of it. Explore in prayer. Say, God and God is sign. God and God is sign. God will finish it. You know when Jesus has prayed for somebody who was blind? He said, Can you see? He said, I can see them as what? As trees. Jesus Christ said, come again. So you will go in detail prayer again. He said, now I'm going to another level of prayer. In this situation, or anything you have been searching for, and you have a little taste of it, you have a little progress about it, and I'm telling you that God is saying, you should till and dig more into the ground, and you will get the full harvest in Jesus' name. Please, don't play with that. You know, in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 29, what did he say? In Proverbs 22, verse 29, I love that scripture. Because no man that is diligent can stay and be weakly. In Proverbs chapter 22, verse 29, See as that a man diligent in his business, he shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before me. Amen. Amen. He shall stand before kings. It shall not stand before me. Please listen very well. We say that what is needed and why searching for prospect number one, you must keep searching until you get to your fertile ground. You must keep searching until you get to your fertile ground. That is number one thing that you will do. Number two, you must be vigilant to identify the ground as you are searching. Not every ground is for you. Not every ground is better. Are you hearing me now? You must be vigilant to search to know which is your ground. That's number three. When you have seen the better ground, you must put all your effort. Listen to me. 
So people, when they are in the church, in the ministry, and God is telling them that I have given you a gift, they just stop them. You ought to put all your effort. Oh God. Oh God. You, listen, anything God will pass on you. Anything God puts, anything God puts on you. Can be dormant if you don't work on it. Hello? Did you understand what I'm saying? The reason why you need to work hard as soon as you discover your soil is to make sure that that which God has put in you is harnessed, is explored, is excavated, is digged out, is meant to manifest. Therefore, if you are here and you are searching, and you have been diligent enough to know that this is my ground. The next thing that dig, explore, till, begin to excavate. And by doing that, you have to be coming for your Tuesday Sunday program regularly. When they say the prayer, you begin to pray regularly. You know something I tell some people some time ago. I made a law in this place. And maybe you have forgotten. I said anybody that comes here for healing. And you just come here one Tuesday and you feel that God didn't heal you very well. You have to do it yourself. Because when you come for prayer of healing in this church, in this ministry, I'm not boasting. You must be healed. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you tarry here, say that here, you must be healed. No demon. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Once you get your healing, you can go. No problem. But until you are healed, remain. And you must be healed. Nothing can stop it in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Look at things we talk authoritatively. Because we know who God is. What, what would I say like that? Please, if you discover any bit of thing about you that is having to do with progress, that is having to do with prospects, God says that you tell me you should explore them all. You should dig them up. You should stay top them all in the name of Jesus. Please don't forget. Don't forget. If you are here and something has been planted in you, you have observed something. I repeat, please, please do not stop at that level. You keep digging. You know, was it on Sunday when I oh, the ministry? I don't know whether it was Sunday. The program, we had a program of uh, the partition of the gift of the Spirit. Am I right? What was it on Saturday? It was a Saturday program. I think after that Saturday, on Sunday, as we were praying, 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 I think I was laying hands on people, am I right? And uh, I embraced, I told one of my pastors to embrace me. Even the pastor didn't know what happened. It was not by favor, it was not favoritism. It was God, what God told me many months ago, and I called the pastor. I said, God told me to anoint you. But since then, I have been anointed, and I know that I have told him that God has said that. I can't say that you just embrace the person. But that does not mean automatic license. The guy needs to do something about that embrace. And I was glad to that anywhere you want to manifest and you remember that embrace, he said the manifestation will be real. Are you, are you listening to what I'm saying now? You hear me? Whatever is planted in you, you have a duty and work to do about it. You have a duty and have something to do about it. So, we are saying that the last thing here is you need to do what? You need to dig deep. You need to explore. You need to till the ground. Once you discover your ground, once you begin to remain sensitive, that something has come upon you and working on you. Even if it takes one year, dig it, you will get it in the name of Jesus. Rise up, let us be rise up, rise up, rise up. Tell the Lord I'm out for something. Tell the Lord I'm out for something. Open your mouth and talk. Let's the people on. My father, my father, the spirit of prayerlessness, the spirit of prayerlessness must leave me this year.
that prayer, one that I'll be so long. Because of my brother, my sister, I'll be crying and crying. I release the answer in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Lord, you said whatever I lose or I lose again. That is why I use I. And you told me he is sick. I declare that sickness. I declare that affliction that have been upon you. And you have been running to the hospital right here, right there. I command that affliction. Get out in Jesus' name. Yeah. Now, spirit of poverty, lack, I command you. Move out in the name of Jesus. Yeah. That individual out there who wants to hear us on the internet, that spirit of suicide, 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 I command you out in Jesus' name. Yeah. As many of you here out there that came to this prayer, I release you to God. Yeah. As many that have not been born again, I command you, I release you to God. Yeah. Let conviction come and follow you and get free from sin in Jesus' name. Yeah. Whatever is your heart is that will bring glory to the name of God. Take it now. Yeah. Take it now. Yeah. I release it in the name of Jesus. Yeah. All the powers that are monitoring you go in the vehicle they are there. You travel out of this country they are there. They monitor you here and there. They repatriate you. I command those power in the name of Jesus. Get out in Jesus' name. Yeah. You cannot monitor my brother here. Yeah. You cannot monitor my sister here. Yeah. I release you for that bondage. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Anything that has been placed in your house, that once you get home and you get in contact with that power, that frustration comes again, I command that power as I'm making the decree in your house to get out in Jesus' name. Amen. Get out in Jesus' name. Amen. Go back to where you were sent from. And tell the person that sent you that you have been chased away. In the name of Jesus. Be healed. As you turn the place that is paying, the hand of God is upon you, right? As you turn the place that is paying, the hand of God is upon you, right? I release power. I release power. I release anointing. I release fire. In the name of Jesus. Take it. Take it. Take it. I release. Thank you, the name of Jesus. You are loose. You are free. You are delivered. I cover you all with the blood of Jesus. Father, thank you for prayer and answer. Jesus, name I pray. I believe you are blessed. And if you are still in doubt as to whether you are saved, then pray this prayer. Lord Jesus, I surrender totally to you today. Grant me the opportunity never to go back to the word of sin. Forgive me, Lord, and write my name in the Lord's Book of Life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.